God bless you for choosing to listen to this anointed message from Dr. Reverend Christopher Abulame of King's Tabernacle, where Jesus Christ is Lord and we are bringing the kingdom to the nations. And so this morning, I'm going to try to be quick, like I said. What I had prepared is the act of backsliding. The act of backsliding. And, and some of the examples that we gave earlier on kind of just fall within what I have been thinking about prior to coming here this morning. The act of backsliding. And now ask yourself, what is backsliding? The word itself speaks for itself. To backslide means to slide back. To slide back. It's, it's faster when you're sliding than when you're working. It's faster when you're sliding than when you are walking. It didn't say back walking. It said backsliding. So when I'm sliding back, I'm, I'm, I'm really going back fast. Uh, we walk with God as we walk forward. Every step at a time. Uh, that's what the Bible says, you walk with God. But when the Bible talks about going away from God, distancing myself from God, then it qualifies it with a different compound word, which is backsliding, sliding back. And I was looking at that, that the different definition of this word backsliding, and, and the first one that I saw kind of put me off, but I went back to it. I went back, when I saw, I said, well, we've come again with our perverse society and our corrupt mind. And I went back to, and the definition says that returning to your ex. When I saw that, I said, no, this, 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 this. It said backsliding means returning to your ex. I said, no, 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 this cannot be. But I went, I went back to, yeah, returning to your ex. Yeah, I said, it makes sense. What, 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 what the de definer wanted to bring to my mind is that when I backslide, I'm actually returning to my ex. And I was asking myself, what is a Christian's ex? <laughs> the devil was my ex before I was born again. Sin was my ex before I was born again. Fornication was my ex before I was born again. Adultery was my ex before I was born again. Now I'm saved. I'm walking with God. Therefore, when I slide back into those lifestyles that I let, I just return to my ex. And there are Christians right now who are with their ex. And they just don't realize it. And some of us do know that we have moved away from God. And now we have moved in with our exes. Now ask yourself, what was your ex? And are you back with her? Or are you still with him? Glory to God. And, and, and other, trans, other definition says reverting to pre-conversion habits. The things that I used to do before I was converted, now I'm back to those things. That's backsliding. And like I said, it is fast when I, when I slide back. And sometimes the sliding is slow. And you gradually slide. Until you find yourself back to where you were. And I ask myself, have I in any part of my life slid back? You know those Michael Johnson sliding? Some of us, that's what we're doing right now. You're sliding like Michael Johnson. Glory to God. You just got the spirit of Michael Johnson. You're sliding back. So fast, more than Jackson did it. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I remember when we were, when we were still young. I mean, Michael Johnson doing this thing. We'll learn how to do that thing. Uh, you know, we had competition on who can really slide. I, I hope you're not having competition who can slide back as Christians. Glory be to Jesus. Just think about it a little bit. It said, it said here, it is reverting to Preconceived Herbert, and then another definition says relapsing into sin. And that, 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 that kind of struck me a little bit. Relapsing into sin. And then you, you've been to hospital, some of us have been, you've been around medical people. When, when, when they tell you that the condition relapsed, you'll be scared. You better be scared. When you go in the doctor's office and say, Well, what we were managing. Or treating has relapsed. You better be scared. 
because that moment is worse than the former. What happens thereafter in relapsing, what happened thereafter is worse than the first. And so what this is saying to me is that the condition of a backslidden condition is worse than a man or woman who is trying to walk with God and God is working on you. I remember when we went visit street. Can't forget that picture that we had in our children's department in Providence. And you see this little kid in that photo. And he said, don't worry about me. God is still working on me. And, and that is an attitude of a Christian who truly want to walk with God. Every man may be criticizing you, but you know that you're not back where you were. Every day that you walk with God is better than the previous day. And they, they're expecting you to go faster than that. You're there digging in with God and say to them, be patient with me. God is still working in me. Glory to God. And so reverting and allowing relapse in my life is a dangerous thing. And, and there are two forms of backsliding. There is a spiritual, physical backsliding. And there's a spiritual, full-blown spiritual backsliding. There is a physical spiritual backsliding and there's a full-blown spiritual backsliding. What am I trying to say? There's backsliding that brings you, 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 everything about you and me to where we were. Brings you to everywhere we are. And, and we're having, having conversation earlier on about fornication. And I got these examples before I got here. And I, I remember this story as I was looking at my message. Of a man who was taking a flight and was going on a business trip and sat down with a woman. And in the flight, and a woman trying to get him, like some of us have a spirit. And, 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 and he, he started to think in his mind, what am I going to do in this condition, this situation now? I have a situation in my hand that I need to reserve. How do I reserve this? And he is born again believer. Alone now. Pastor is not there. Members are not there. Uh, he's by himself. He could don't do, do, do anything and, and another will come out of it. And then, and then he got to himself and said to himself, I have a wife at home. I have children at home. If I get myself in this condition, what am I going to tell my family? And she turned away, he turned away from it. Said, no, I'm not going to do it. And, and then there's another story of somebody else, a Christian too. Went, went, went on a business trip. And, and, and then the ex heard that he's going to be in town. And he said... Uh, where, where are you staying? Say, I'm not staying in a hotel. I got, I got my hotel booked. I said, well, you know, you, you save that money. You don't need to spend that. I live in the city. You can stay with me. I got a big house. You just stay and I'll give you my, another room to stay. You got everything. And I'll be by myself. And you can, you can have a good time. And, and the man thought about it. said, oh, yes, yeah, a good idea. And then moved in. Came to town, picked up the help airport. Went to his ex house, stayed in, and he was sleeping. In the middle of the night, the rooms were not too far. Like we said earlier on, you got to give some distance. The distance wasn't too much because now they're both in the same house. The doors are locked, and it's midnight. And then she got up, she stripped herself, and came to the room. He's ex it wasn't easy his ex came to the room in the middle of the night stripped naked and before they knew it they had committed that doctrine christian man went back sleeted right then and there and to make it worse brother after the act the ex looked at him in the face and said, you call yourself a Christian. That's what I said. You call yourself a Christian. And look at what you have done. 
violated himself, violated his family, violated his church. But he got sense enough, brother. After that, he cried and cried and got on the next flight, coming back home. Went straight to church, to the pastor's office, and said, Pastor, I'm done. This is all that happened. Narrated his story, just as it happened, and said, God, forgive me. You know some people would not do that. They'll backslide, they'll stay right there in the backsliding state. But the man has sense enough. His Christianity caught up with him and said, I'm going home. And came to the pastor, confessed his sin. Two stories, different outcomes. So we decide our stories. You can decide your story. I decide my story. I make my choices. You make your choices. The outcome may be the same and sometimes the outcome may be different. But however the outcome is, God is still God. He's not going to change. What I do doesn't change God. God is eternal. So now, he says, Proverbs chapter 14, verse 14. He said, the backslider in heart. Now, pay attention to that. You can mark down your Bible. Backslider in heart. So there is such a thing as backsliding in heart. In other words, I may be physically there, but my heart is not there. Like I said, two spiritual, physical backsliding and a spiritual backsliding by self. So here we're talking about spiritual backsliding. That happened in the realm of the heart. That's why there are hypocrites in church. That's why there are hypocrites in church. I hope somebody's not sitting there now and wondering, oh, I wish we told the pastor not to preach today. <laughs> I wish we told him not to preach today. <laughs> what I'm saying is that there, there are hypocrites in church. When I talk about church, it's the body of Christ. Because we got a bunch of men and women whose heart are far away from God. But with their lips and their mouths, they worship him. Look at Matthew chapter 15 verse 8. It said that people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honor at me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. It's a spiritual thing. You can, be, you can be there, but you are not there. Your mind is out. You can be in a relationship and you're really not there. Physically, you're present. But spiritually, you are absent. Your mind is absent from it. You can be at a job. You show up every day for eight hours. Your body is there. My body is there. But my mind checked out a long time ago. I checked out a long time ago. I just show up. I can be a Christian. I just show up. But my mind checked out a long time ago. And so God is saying... I'm drawing near to him with my mouth and my leap and my tongue, but my heart is far from him. Where is your heart? Where's my heart? Wherever the treasure of a man is, there his heart will be also. You cannot walk away and check out from where your treasure is. Can't. Can't check out from where your treasure is. A man's mind, a man's heart and body is connected to his treasure. Think about it. Some of you sitting here today, including myself, one week does not go by without you checking your bank account. One week will go by. You check your bank account, what comes in, what goes out. If one penny is missing, you get on the phone, you call the bank. What happened to my one penny? Why? Because that's your treasure. Your heart is in it. Look at the stock market. You call your 401k company. What's going on with my 401k? You know why you're so, you're so in debt with it? It's because your heart is there. That's where your treasure is. 
Where is your treasure? That's where your heart is. And, and I can answer that for myself. You've got to answer it for yourself. When, when, when I am no longer... I'm no longer connected to God and with God and God's purpose for my life. I have slid back. Now, if you may take a moment, just ask yourself, what are the things you used to do for God that you no longer do or no longer have pleasure? Now, let's, let's back up. No longer have pleasure doing it. The day I stop having pleasure doing what I do, I just backslid it. Does it give me pleasure? Does it give me pleasure to be with God? When I wake up in the morning, does it give me pleasure to be with God? Maybe it had in the past, but now no longer give me pleasure. I, I just show up, but I checked out. Does it give me pleasure going to church? Does it give me pleasure praying? Do I feel the worship and the singings? Am I passionate about what I do? Is my passion still the same from the way it was two years ago? If I cannot connect the dots, then I need to come to God and say, God, I checked out a few years ago and I want you to take me back. Glory to God. Think about your prayer life. Think about your Bible study life. No, we're talking about studying the Bible. Now, think about yourself. Back in the day, you were, you were devout. You were, I would sit down. You would sit down. You would devour the Bible like that's all that you do daily. Now it becomes a burden. Don't feel like doing it no more. Don't feel like coming to church. Don't feel like serving God. What is it about my feeling anyway? Why is my feeling becoming too important now that my faith in God? It is not about my feeling. It's about my faith in God because I know that my life depends on it. Backsliding sometimes is very subtle. And I've had four folk you tell them, Lord, brother, you, you, are, you are moving close to Sodom. And they say, no, pastor, I'm fine. I'm fine. No, brother, you are moving close to Sodom. Oh, no, I'm fine. I, I, I have this adage back in the motherland that says that when a child is caught in a tree, the elderly person knows where the tree is going to fall. And sometimes you're sitting with this young man, young lady. Lady, you're, you're, you're moving away from the fire. Say, no, I'm still good. I'm fine, pastor. I still speak in tongues. I still pray in the Holy Ghost. I still have my quiet time. That's not what I'm talking about. Where is your heart? The heart of the matter is the matter of your heart. <laughs> where is your heart and I will quickly go through this story because of time in the next five minutes I want to get away from your face and now see what the prodigal son story tells me it said Luke chapter 15 from verse 11 it said and he said a certain man Jesus said a certain man had two sons and the younger of them came to his father and said father give me the portion of the goods that fall to me. Now the question is. What is my portion? What is my portion? For every believer. The Lord is your portion. The Lord is my portion. And I look at it. Uh, Lamentation chapter 3. From verse 4. It said my flesh and my skin. Had made me whole. He had broken my bones. And then verse 24. It says and. The Lord is my portion, set my soul, therefore I hope. The Lord is my portion. Psalm 142 verse 5, I cry unto the Lord, I said, Thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. God should be my portion. But the young man came and said, I need my inheritance. 
when my inheritance is not God, then I'm on the verge of going back. When, your, when my focus change from God to the things on the earth, then I'm on my way to backsliding state. And because of focus, there are folk who lost interest in serving God. Lost actually interest in serving God. And now let's go on because of, in the interest of time. And, and it says, that's number one, what is my portion? And, and in verse 13, it said, and, and not many days. And, and that shows here that the prodigal son didn't just get his portion and walk away. It was a process. Backsliding is a process. He didn't just get it and walk away the same day. That's what the Bible says here. It said, after he got everything that the father gave to him, it said, not many days, not many days after, not many days after he got it. He got it. It's in his hand. He was at home. He, he had a choice. He could have stayed there with his portion given to him and still serve his father. And he would still be all right. God can bless you and you'll still be a servant of God. God can favor you. You'll still be a servant of God. You'll still serve him with all your heart, with all your might. You know why? Because your prayer, your life, your holiness never depended on God blessing you with substance from this world. That's not it. You're still the same in spite of the blessing. The blessing of God in your life makes you rich. It has no sorrow. It draws you close to God. You know, blessings should draw you close to God. Blessing of God should draw a man close to God. A man or woman who becomes father from God because he's blessed, he's got a problem. He's got a problem. Blessing should bring you what? Close to God. You fear God more. You love him more. You appreciate him more. Because you look at yourself and say, God, how, how did you have so much mercy on me to bless me with so much substance? I did not deserve it. But God, you bless me. I worship you more. But I see the opposite. Oh God, I need you to give me a job. I need you to give me a wife. I need you to give me children. I need you to give me a house. I need you to give me this. And the Lord said, yeah. And you said, what, what, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, 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 Lord, I can't wait. I need it now. I need it now. And God said, all right, take. And he let it come to you. And then I, after, pastor, you know, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. And then we start telling, I get it, I get it, I get it. And I get it, it's moving us back and back and back. We lost our position. Why? Because we have just been blessed. We have just been blessed. Now you have to have, have a, a service on the airplanes. Because God has blessed you with your private jet. You know, we have a Sunday service up there in heaven. It's closer to God. No, that's the, no. You made that up. You made that up. God bless me with it. God bless you. And then you're going to go away from God. That's backsliding right there. Blessings of God does not drive a man or woman from God. It brings him to the altar and bow his knee far before God and worship him because God has been so good to him. He'll be the first person in this place. Because the Lord has been good to him. And now, not many days, not many days, the Bible says that he took a trip. Look at what it said, verse 13. And not many days after the, after the young son gathered, he gathered everything all together and did what? And took what? And took what? Do you have your Bible there? Verse 13. He said he took his trip. His trip. His trip. When I begin to take my trip, I, I'm, I'm, I'm moving away from God. Never you forget this. I've said it many times. You cannot be on fire if you're not close to the fire, forget it. It's not going to happen. You cannot, I cannot go on Facebook. We have it. We're on Facebook. You remind yourself. I remind myself these things. I preach to you. I preach to myself too. You cannot be on fire. Say, hey, Lord, I want to be on fire. I want to be on fire. Lord, I want to be on fire. But you're not close to the fire. If you want to be on fire, it's not hard. It's not hard. 
I need to find a fire. Where is the fire? Where is the fire? I want to bring myself close to the fire. I said, God, I'm right here now like Moses. The land upon which you stand is holy ground. Take off those shoes, those nice golden shoes. Take them off. I want you to feel my holiness. And God set him on fire. If I want to be on fire, then you'll be close to the fire. He said, he said it took his journey, not God's journey. In other words, he was going his own journey now. You know, sometimes we've been so we've been so used to God and said, God, you know, I've been following you all this in my life. Uh, I've been praying, I've been fasting, I've been doing all this. Lord, can I just take my own journey? I just want to do it myself. I just want to do it myself. God said, Okay, you can't. Baby, you cannot. That's too dangerous for you. You can't. Say, Well, I, I want I want to try it out. And they let you try it out. And you find out it's not that easy. Glory to God. He said, He took his journey. It he took what daddy gave to him, the blessing that he got, and then he took his journey. And, and let's, let's go quick. Let's go quick. I wish I had some more time. But let's go quick. And then because he took his journey, what happened? And there what? This, this is the consequence of Barcelona. He said, there he did what? He wasted his substance. You can't. Apart from God, I can do nothing. Beside him, I can do nothing. Without him, I can do nothing. He said he went away from his father. He backslided from his father, took his journey, and set it in a place far away from home. And what Bible said, he wasted everything. Backsliding is a wasteful state. The state of backsliding is a wasteful state. Listen to me. The state of backsliding is a wasteful state. Don't think twice, for those of you who are listening to me today, and I'm very serious now. Don't think twice that it do, does you any good to walk away from that faith which you have believed and put all your life in. And now you want to be with your ex. Think about it. Don't ever believe that. Don't ever let your mind even think about it. That you walk away from God, you'll be back with the devil. Think about what the devil is going to do to you. Think about it. You've been here binding the devil. Devil, I bind you in Jesus' name. Fire, Lord. Yeah, yeah. And now you come back, said devil. <laughs> you know, I've been with those same Christians. I've been praying with them. Now I've decided to come back to you. Now think about what devil. The devil is ruthless. Doesn't like you. Doesn't love you. Think about what he's going to do. So this. We, 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 the bridges have been blown. They're not there. We can't go back. It's a wasteful state. It's a wasteful state to stop praying. It's a wasteful state to stop evangelizing when you were an evangelist before. It's a wasteful state to stop reading the Bible when you were reading the Bible before. It's a wasteful state when you have fellowship with the brethren. Now you walk your way. It's a wasteful state to find your own journey apart from God. Even though Jesus said, for without me, you can do nothing. It is a wasteful state. The Bible says he took his stuff, he went on his journey, he backslid, and then he wasted everything. And now follow, let, let's close. He said, verse 14. And, and when he has spent all, everything will be spent. You know why everything will be spent, ladies and gentlemen? Because you're not taking back in. You're not taking back in. You're giving out. You're not taking back in. You're giving out. You're not, now, you, you moved away from the fire. You moved away from the source. You are taking my journey. And I, I'm spending my capital. And I'm not getting back from God. Because I forsook him. It's a wasteful state. And I'm going to spend all. Soon I'll be so dry. Like a dead wood. Ready to be put in the fire. And that's a consequence. That's the danger of backsliding. Somebody tells you. Well, let, let, let's go for a party. Let's do the devil's party. You know, Why do you want to go to church? And somebody says, well, do, do, do I have to go to church every Sunday? You are backsliding. That's what's going on. Why would, why would a Christian even ask that question? So do, I, do I have to pray every day? Why would you ask that question? You know better. 
Do I have to? And the pastor's wife said, we should read the Bible. Do we have to read Bible every day? You are backsliding. That's why you're asking those questions. Why would, why would a Christian? Would, that's why I say I understand your passion. Why would a Christian even ask that question? Why would you read the word of God? What is your existence? What's my existence? Why, will I tell myself, my mama said, go eat. I said, why, why should I eat every day, mama? Do I have to eat? I'm ready to commit suicide. That's why I would say to mama, why, why do I have to eat every day? They said, stay breathing. Say, why do I have to breathe every day? <laughs> You're trying to die. And that's what happened in Boston in state. I'm trying to die when I begin to tell God, what do I have to do that? Do I have to do all the things that I used to do? I, we think, well, we're, we're cute. We're spiritual. No, you're not. It's not spirituality to question the things that you were doing that brought you to where you are today. I knew where I came out of. I knew how I got here. Ain't no devil in hell will tell me to change what I've been doing all these years. It's impossible. Why should I walk away from my real estate? Why should I? Why should I? Why should I walk away from my inheritance? But our Christians who do, and I said, he said he wasted everything. He spent all in verse 14. And now he said, it goes on to say, there arose a great mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in one, something he never did before. And lastly, I stop here. I'll stop here in verse 15. And the Bible says he joined himself. He became a citizen of the country that he found himself. He became a citizen. He joined himself to them. That, that is full-blown, absolute backsliding. That's folk who tell you all kind of story. You go preach to them and say, well, I used to be in church. I used to be a Sunday school teacher. I know all these things, Brother Sunday, that you are telling me. I know them. But I just can't come back to them. That's a full-blown backslider. Have no more pleasure in it. Bible says, know the Lord thy God in the days of your youth. Because the day draw it nigh. That's what he say. It's drawing near. When you would say I have no pleasure in them. When a man or woman start to no longer find pleasure in anything about God. He is sliding back. And soon he'll find himself in that land. And he become a citizen of the land. And that's why. When the prodigal son, go read it. Don't have time to go through all of them. When he came back, he had to be re-citizenshipped. The, the father said to them, servant, he said, clean him up. Put a white garment on him, which, which represents righteousness. And he said, put a ring on his finger. That is citizenship. So he, said, he lost his citizenship. His citizenship was given back to him when he came back. That, that, was the, that was the purpose of the ring. Go back, read it, what that meant back in the day. It was not a marriage thing. It, it, it symbolizes like marriage will be coming back into that relationship and becoming one. But in this case, it is restoring the individual to citizenship. Because he lost his citizenship. He has gone into a box. I'll stop here. God bless you for listening. And I hope that you and me can evaluate our lives, not just sitting here, but after here, and just be touchful about where you came from, how you have been with God, and where you are today with God. And there could be some areas in your life that you say, God, I have not measured up. I, I, I took my journey. I went my way. I'm in a wasteland right now, or I have become citizen of the land but God, I want to come back. Like the prodigal son. Say, I'm going back home. Bible says he came to himself. But you cannot, you cannot do this until you realize and recognize that you've been far removed from God. You've been far removed from God. You can't. The Bible says Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19, it said, But we are not of them that draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. And Jeremiah 3, verse 22 says, Return. Ye backslidden children, and I will heal your backslidden. Behold, we come unto thee, for thou art the Lord our God. Father, we thank you this morning. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the ears that heard them. Lord, we're asking that we will not be hearers only, but do us also. Lord Almighty, bring us again to where we should be, all of us, God. 
we submit ourselves under your mighty hand. And to you be praise and glory forevermore. Amen. But I wanted to make sure that you are still hungry for the Lord. If you are satisfied, I'll go home because I don't want to preach it to empty seats. But if you still need something from God to take home with you, in addition to what you have already heard, I'm happy to do this this morning. We if you have been blessed by this message or have a prayer request, we would like to hear about it. Please call us at 401-954-6188 or visit our website at www.kingstabernacle.org. You are also welcome to join us on Sundays for services beginning at 8.30, 10 a.m. or 6 p.m. and for Wednesday Bible studies at 7 p.m. We are located at 500 Greenville Avenue in Johnston, Rhode Island. Please remember that you are always welcome at King's Tabernacle where Jesus Christ is Lord and we are bringing the kingdom to the nations.